Hey guys, how's it going? So you just saw some really exciting changes that recently happened in our garden. So I wanted to come out here before we get snow, which we're supposed to get tomorrow, and walk you through all of those changes. In this area on the northeast corner of the barn, we had four trees dug up and moved. I forgot to mention, I'm sorry if the audio is bad. It's pretty breezy out today. It's sunny and looks lovely, but it is frigid. We also have on the end of our 10 day forecast, one night at four degrees and one night at one degree. So we're bracing ourselves for that. Anyway, the re <laughs> there's Douglas. The reason why we did that is because we need to put a lane in to access this back piece of property that we recently purchased. Our main driveway is right here. We decided that since this area was clear, you know, last year, I'm gonna swing this direction, try to go slow. Last year, the beautiful pond went in and then you probably noticed we just ignored this section because we knew we were working on this deal. We didn't wanna put anything in the way. We did go ahead and put this locust tree here, which might be in the way. We might have to dig that up and move it just a little bit this way, depending on how it works out. But anyway, we'll have a lane come off our main driveway and come back this direction so that we can access the back of the barn. And then also, so we have easier access to the barn area. We had Nathan Malad come out who owns Malad Tree Farm and that's where we got all of the big, beautiful evergreens last year and they're doing beautifully. But we had him come out just to survey the project, to look at the trees we wanted to have moved and to look at the locations where uh, we wanted them to be put. Douglas, do not, do not swipe at me. I'm not paying attention so I don't know when it's coming. He's so sweet, but he's kind of a menace at the same time. <laughs> anyway, so Nathan had come out several weeks ago and, and looked at everything and we had planned to do this project. Well, he texted us, I think the day before he brought every, the tree and all of his equipment over and said, hey, I'm ready to do it. Let's, we have a window of opportunity. The weather is still really nice. Um, and that's a thing. We've had an unseasonably up to this point warm winter and we've been able to get away with a lot of extra things that we wouldn't normally have been able to do. Um, so we thought, yes, let's do it. Let's get this done so we can kind of get this uh, lane planned. So the very first tree they moved from this section was the great big blue spruce, which they installed last year. And we moved it right back here. I am so happy with the placement. So they dug the hole for that first, then they came and accessed the tree from the backside, dug it up and then just scooted it over there. Isn't that wild? It's just something that I really, I had never seen in person. So until I did, it just didn't seem like it was a real thing. Like people can actually do that. In fact, Nathan was telling us about a line he's got on some 30 foot evergreens that he's wanting to dig and uh, bring to his farm. And I know Aaron is just like, ooh, shoot me a price. <laughs> shoot me a price for one of those. I it just, it boggles my mind that you can do that. But uh, anyway, Nathan uh, actually bought a bigger piece of equipment. He had a 90 inch, or has a 90 inch spade and he bought a 100 inch spade uh, so that he could handle some bigger things. But uh, anyway, he was saying that, you know, this is the best time of year to move things if you can. I mean, the trees are sleeping. Uh, so if you can dig a hole and you can you know, manage to get them out of the ground and get them moved, then they'll be able to wake up in their homes uh, the next season. It just hasn't been a reality for us because winter is usually winter. You know, we usually have frozen ground and snow on the ground. He did tell us though that he can move big evergreens no matter what time of year it is. Uh, middle of summer, doesn't matter. They're super tough and they can handle it. The other three trees were the heritage birch, I hand dug that hole right there to plant that tree. And then, so the big blue spruce, and then we had a little purple prince crab apple here, and then a pine tree, an Oregon green Austrian right there, which ended up right back over there. Before we head back there to look at the trees, uh, the plan for the rest of this area is to off of this lane that, you know, we'll probably go back to the barn, we'll come off of it. And this whole area, we're gonna move all of our junk and reorganize and everything but we're gonna have Chad come in and just level everything up really nicely and have a nice layer of gravel put down so it's just very tidy. Uh, Aaron wants to have an overhang built off the back of the barn, which he assures me will be really inexpensive. <laughs> We'll see. But we want to have a way to store things under cover, like the lawn tractor. It's parked back here right now, but it gets whatever weather we get. You know, if there's rain or snow or whatever, it's just like this piled up on the lawn tractor. There are covers and things, but it sure would be nice to have an overhang just to not have to worry about it. You know, we've got a golf cart that we could park underneath there as well and just kind of organize our stuff because right now it's a mess. It just becomes that way. You know, you have these extra things like this is the concrete and iron fence section that came out from underneath the crabapple tree as well as the Hebe uh, fountain that was underneath the crabapple. You know, I haven't decided where to put these yet and I want to keep them, but yeah, so we just, 
end up with these piles of things and we'd like to have a way to store them nicely. So our goal is to have evergreens all along here first. We want it to be a mixed border, you know, with deciduous and evergreen, but we'll do evergreens first so that whatever we end up doing back here will be blocked. The neighbors won't have to look at it. Our neighbor already came over here and talked to Aaron and just said, oh, what you guys are doing, we're so happy with it. Uh, he really wants these big trees to come out, which we are gonna do because they're, their elms which i mentioned before and maybe in kind of a flippant way but i talked about how trashy the elm trees are around here because they are <laughs> i know there are nice elm trees but here in our area they're a type of elm that have been here for a long time and they're so susceptible to bore damage they fall apart just like with no no wind i mean we had a, an elm tree behind the chicken coop that i was standing next to and one of the great big trunks fell down just fell down 30 feet in front of me and you know that's not good to have that sort of tree around and i don't want to have a bunch of trees that we have to treat with chemicals and they also drop those little white seeds everywhere it's like a carpet so uh, he was asking like Are you guys gonna take those out because that would be really nice so we do plan to have that done so this blue spruce is the first step for the evergreen border and i know paul and bethany came along today and got them all watered in and so they're going to come back through and see if any soil has settled this afternoon you can see like right in here see that we'll want to make sure to fill in any areas where the soil has settled but this tree shouldn't even skip a beat. It looks amazing, I love this tree. Back behind the greenhouse, I'm not sure that we're gonna do a ton back here, except I am gonna move the espalier pear one of these days. <laughs> we'll move that, we'll move the raised beds, and then we're gonna go ahead and plant north poles because that's what our neighbors planted right here on their side, and that's what we have further down the way, you know? So we'll kind of carry on that idea just for this section here, and then this will all be graveled, nice and level. And this will probably be an area where we still store our plants that we have for projects, some of them anyway. Because they're close to water, it makes it easy. This right here is our well. So we're gonna build a little hut to put over that. And then Aaron was talking about maybe having Chad bring in some more soil and amping up these berms. So that we can just you know, have some great big berms, maybe even some boulders, and then we'll have insta height. You know, when we put in an evergreen, like it'll be instantly a lot bigger if it's on a berm rather than, you know, straight flat on the ground. Okay, let's go to this pine. I wanna make sure I'm not pointing in my neighbor's yards. They brought their smaller digger to move the smaller trees. So again, we have a little bit of soil settling around that root ball that we'll make sure to get uh, filled in today. But this, an, this is an Oregon green Austrian pine that'll get 25 by 15, so not enormous. I think it's a really nice, look back here it's kind of an oddly shaped tree the trunk is straight but it kind of looks like it's going this way just because of the way the branches are shaped a little bit that looks really nice douglas approves quick look back towards the barn before we head to where the other trees went but i wanted to show you this elm tree because this looks an awful lot like the one we had that started to fall down so you can see they already had to take out one of the branches and these have just been here for so long that they were never trained properly I mean, I, these were probably here, I'm guessing, before this house was ever even built. Um, so this branch was taken out, or this trunk, and then it just collects a lot of moisture inside. And what happened with ours is that it was rotten. You couldn't tell, but it was rotten down in the middle. And when that trunk, which was about this size, fell over, you could see just a big pool of water underneath it. And I don't wanna have that kind of worry. So that's why we've been systematically taking out the elm trees as we've, um, acquired them. Okay, the other trees are just beyond the pond area. Before we head over to the other side, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a different view. We're standing in front of the barn and chicken coop. Here's our driveway. So the lane will take off right here. We do plan on having a planting area. In fact, I think Aaron wants to put a big evergreen, like a, I, I would love to put a weeping Alaskan cedar right here. And then some other things along the barn and then the lane and then more trees. So that honey locust tree may or may not be in the way. I am just, <laughs> I'm not sure. It's so young and we planted it kind of late in the season. So that'll be an easy one for us to move if we need to. Okay, there goes Paul. He just fixed all the soil around the other trees. These two are the other ones that we had moved from the one spot we just came from. And then this one is a brand new spruce. First of all, this is a triple trunk heritage birch. This is the one that was closest to the barn. I love the white, and brown peely bark on this one. So gorgeous, now I can't remember the exact stats, but I wanna say that these get like 35 feet wide or 30, something like that, and pretty dang tall. So I think that'll be really pretty, and we're not worried about keeping this 100% evergreen toward the back. It'll just be kind of a mixed thing all the way around. 
like we've started over on the other side. And then this right here is a Purple Prince crab apple. So this variety grows about 20 feet tall, 20 foot spread. But the things I love about it, I love the dark bark. Like look at that, the contrast there. It's got like kind of a purplish tint to it, like a purplish brown. And the flowers are gorgeous. Uh, they're kind of a, like, I don't know, deep, deep pink. And you can see that most of the crabs are gone. The birds have cleaned them off right here and they're persistent. So they won't fall on the ground and make a mess. The ones that are left that don't get eaten will uh, be pushed out when new growth pushes them out. So usually you don't have a mess because the birds eat them all. It's also hardy down to a zone four, which is nice. You know, we have that forecast, like I mentioned before, close to zero. And technically they say we're in a zone seven now, but we'll see, we'll see if we go down into a zone six territory. I will probably never plant like we're a zone seven uh, because I just don't think we are. But you know, transplanting, no matter when you do it, you can be as careful as can be, and it's still a risk to the plant, but it's always better to do it when the plant is dormant. Uh, and I think the number one thing to keep your plant happy is to keep it, keep it moist, make sure they are watered in well, and make sure even if it's in the middle of winter, that you're keeping some moisture on the root ball because even if you're getting rain, a lot of times, unless it's a deciduous tree like for evergreens, the canopy is deflecting a lot of that moisture. So you wanna make sure that underneath, like in that root ball area, that it's actually getting wet. So just being mindful of that, we usually have pretty good luck with it. Now the story behind this one, this big, beautiful blue spruce kind of the anchor piece to this new fence line area that we're so excited about. And we just, you know, want to kind of create the block uh, and, you know, I don't know, fences make good neighbors, right? Give them something pretty to look at and also us something pretty to look at. We were 100% not planning on putting in another big tree at this moment. But when Nathan texted and said, hey, I'm coming with both of my tree spades, I have to bring the big one because, you know, to dig up the big spruce and I also need to bring the little one. The, the costliest part of this whole thing is using the equipment and the transportation. Uh, so he said, you know, I'll give you a discount on a, another big evergreen because I'm bringing the big spade anyway. We have this thing called a pod that we can put it in so we can come set it down. And I posted a reel on Instagram and Facebook, I think, of the tree sitting here in the pod so they can bring it on the piece of big equipment on the big spade we can set it and go take care of the other tree and then while we're here we may as well pop this one in the ground um, so we decided because we did get it for a pretty good deal uh, to go ahead and just do it because it just made sense and I am thrilled with it he sent us I don't know 15 pictures of different blue spruces and I just said that one that one is beautiful I would love to have that one in my garden and of course, Aaron's thrilled because he loves everything and all things to do with trees and the larger, the better. So it was a really exciting day for us because, you know, it was just something a little bit unexpected and something that adds such a tremendous value to this space. You know, the wind has kind of let up a little bit. I want to walk around and show you the other trees that they have installed uh, and how they're looking right in the middle of winter. So this area has seen quite a lot of them. I love this. I love seeing that dimension now. So the new blue spruce, this is one that we had installed last, no, year before last. Look at it. Isn't that gorgeous? Another beautiful shape, beautiful cones. And then this one is a Norway spruce. I tend to gravitate towards spruce trees. Any variety of spruce, they just do well in our area. They're not fussy. They are, they're just, they're beautiful. And this one produced a ton of cones up at the top there. Those branches are like, oh, they need to drop those cones. But this is one of the very first ones we had installed. I mean, before we even had the uh, triangle garden, which was right here, triangle garden was still here. This was like a kind of gravel no man's land. And then we had this tree installed right in the gravel. And then there was a fence right here. You remember that three rail fence um, that blocked off the back garden. So this is another Colorado spruce and they can take on very different color tones. So some of them are more green. And I chose this one because I didn't want it to be green, blue, green, blue. I kind of wanted a, a mixture. This is another Norway right here, a little bit more open and architectural, a little more space between the branches. Here's another Colorado blue right here. And that one's just a total chunk. I love it. Love that icy blue. Now these didn't come from a lad. We got these at Jaker. These are a Serbian spruce, which have the bicolor needles, blue, green. And just for perspective here, we're right at the top of the pond area. And there's Douglas in the blue grama grass. Hey bud. 
Yeah. Okay, so just over on the other side, there's another Colorado with more of the blue-green tint. I'm gonna, let's see, let's walk around the backside, I guess. We were a tiny bit stressed about this one of all the trees because it got a little bit of a cast, like a weird color cast toward the bottom when it got really hot last year. But it seems to have pulled through and it pushed a bunch of new growth. So we're hopeful that it, <laughs> it stays alive because it is a definite anchor piece to this area. And there's no getting big machines back in there now. So it's gotta live. And then one more of the blue spruce right here. And this is a real thick one. So this whole area, we just really wanted to work on creating that evergreen backdrop. And let's run up quick to the Persephone garden and the, the uh, South garden, and I'll show you the other three we have. There's another blue spruce right here. This was to replace a blue spruce that fell over in a windstorm. I wanted to show you from this angle because it's got the best light on it right now. Uh, but it's just such a centerpiece to this area. And really, it creates a little bit more of a room feel. Definitely more so in the season when everything has its leaves. But it's a, it's a huge piece of it. Look at how pretty that is. A great big Norway spruce right here in the South Garden by the Stone Pathway. And this one kind of acts as a backdrop. Because if we swing this way, you can see our dumpster. So we kind of want to, you know, build this up to where when you're in the garden, you're not seeing the dumpster. You're just seeing beautiful plants out here. And I love this one. Okay, last one over there. And this is the last one, a really beautiful, big Norway spruce installed right in the entry of our property. I love how sweeping those branches look. It's so open and airy. It just has a majestic look to it and I love that. And you guys, that is gonna be it for today's video. I just wanted to share some of the process of the exciting new changes happening in the garden, even in January, it's just wild to me. I do think I forgot to mention that when Aaron was filming them installing and like digging up and installing all these trees, that there were two different teams of people working. So it was, <laughs> it was kind of hard to bounce back and forth and it got dark. They were working like, into the evening and it was just pitch dark out there and you can't film in those sort of conditions so hopefully uh, we got enough to where you could kind of see the process and see what happened but we will be sharing updates of how everything comes along i'm hopeful that everything thrives in their new locations and that we can just keep on planting so anyway thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video bye really quick ps you guys i wanted to show you the weeping alaskan cedar that i planted five or six years ago. It's at the back side of the wet west side walkway. And it's the type of tree that I'm thinking of putting right behind our outdoor fireplace and also possibly right by that corner of the barn that I showed you earlier. Isn't that beautiful? The growth habit is amazing and it's doing really great here. And it gets all the wind. It's not protected at all. I have got an instant karma elderberry planted right in front of it that gets enormous. And I'm kind of thinking about taking that out so that we can see this um, rather than just the elderberry from the other side. See if we come in here, like you can see the tree now in the winter time, but in the summer, all you see is just the tippy top. So if I got rid of that, we could let the service berry have a little bit more space to grow and we'll be able to see the evergreen a little bit more. It'll open up this view a bit though. Ugh, I don't know. We'll see. I love that tree.